Hey guys, it is Jen from Farpoint Restorations. Just want to kind of give you a quick little update of some of the things we've been doing. As you can see, we took the doors off. makes the accessibility a whole lot easier. Not only are the doors off, but the seats are gone as well. We were planning on putting more comfortable, safer type seats, you know, the ones with headrests, so if you get into an accident, you don't end up breaking the neck or something. And we've uncovered some more rust and stuff that needs to get taken care of. The front brakes, yeah, they're kind of rusty. So they're going to go ahead and get replaced because they are just not salvageable. The steering ended up pretty good. Only a couple little parts that need to get redone for it. And right now, Eric is up underneath working on some who knows what he's working on right now. Let's go check in with him and see what he's up to. As you can see with the engine removed, there's a lot more room for him to be uh, working in there. And what we're getting ready to do is pull out the gas tank and just make sure everything is where it needs to be. So hi everybody. Yeah, like Jen said, I'm working on removing the firewall here between the gas tank and the engine bay. Working here isn't too bad. Um, the big surprise I would say so far, and I'll show you this in another video, is that the battery tray on this side I knew it had some rust. I knew it was, you know, a little bit rough around the edges, but I didn't realize just how bad it was. Now, my ability to weld thin steel is pretty subpar, so I'm a little concerned about that. Um, might just be that we lay something in there and I tack it and then we fiberglass it in so it just stays put. In fact, fiberglass is probably better than metal for a battery tray anyway. But that's another day's problem. I do need to get the tank out because when we're doing this Subaru conversion, you need to have a return line. So the line that comes down out of the tank, and here's a picture of it here, that's gonna to go to our high pressure fuel pump that's gonna feed the injection system. But on Subarus, there has to be a return for all the leftover fuel that doesn't get burned. And so we need to add a second line. Some of the later models, like 77 through 79, that came with fuel injection, that's not an issue. But for these early ones up to, they do have no return line, so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that, but we're going to have to poke a hole in the tank somewhere. I'll probably take the fuel sender out and try to drill it and mount it within finger's reach of where that hole is so that I have a way of screwing you know, something into it. Other than that, back here hasn't been many surprises. The transmission appears to be in pretty good shape. Starter was brand new. Um, it's dirty, there's surface rust around here, and so we're going to clean all this out and then paint it a nice fresh coat of white for two reasons. First, to make it look cool, but secondly, because this is not doesn't have a, a top hatch, we're going to be living inside of this thing when we go to install everything, and I want it to be bright enough in here that I can see everything that I'm doing, because there's going to be a lot of mysteries as we go through this process. So. That's that's what I got going on. Jen, you were talking about the front of the car. What's going on up there? Uh, nothing that a little bit of a rust bond, uh, rust reformer. You know, the usual. <laughs> right on. Well, I guess that'll do it for today. Um, well, no, I'll tell you what. Why don't we just show this happening here? I've got to break the seal for this, but it should be, should be about ready to take this out. I think I've got all of it loose. It's just stuck in by 30 years of... Goo. Um, is there, a, yeah, kind of a big flat blade over there? 
All right, tell everyone what you're doing first before taking out that firewall. So there's a couple of Phillips around the sides here, and there's one each on the underside that I need to get out. I'm working on that right now. And once those are out, depending on how good or bad the seal is for the firewall, this thing should either pop out pretty easily or it may be a giant pain. We'll see. I would guess after 50 something years, it'll probably come out fairly easily um, because that seal's probably gotten brittle and no longer functions properly. There we go. But after that, there are two straps that hold the fuel tank in and I'm looking at the bottom bolts for that. And they look really ugly, like gonna break off ugly. So that may be something we end up having to cut and then replace. Cutting around a gas tank is obviously a little bit sketchy. Come on, I recommend using the uh, blowtorch. That's always smart. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. There we go. I'll hand that to you. Nice. Okay, so some of the stuff we're going to do while we have this out of here, and I've got it, is once I take the tank out, um, I have access to the back wall of where the Z-bed folds up and down. Now, some of the modifications that we're going to make here involve us drilling some holes through that because we need to bring our new wiring harness down. I don't really want the harness to come through where the tank is because then we're going to introduce probably fumes into the inside. Like you can see, I don't know if you can see it, but like the second I opened this up, I started to smell gas fumes. There's our vent line and it's cracked from thousands of years of sitting here, or 50 years anyway. So I'm going to be replacing stuff like that while I have this apart. These lines here look okay. The hoses for them look okay, but yeah. That right there is a big vent line that's just leaking. And so I'll need to fix all that stuff up too. I'm also, you can't see it, but I'm looking, once I have the tank, I don't make a follow-up, but the actual line that goes to filling this thing is cracked all over the place. So I imagine the first time we filled it up, we'd have a nice waterfall of fuel coming out of here. And you can kind of see the stains from where it was doing that at some point. So the next thing I'm going to do, and this is what I said, I'm probably going to have to cut it. These metal straps, the second I tried to turn it, the straps started to turn and we'll actually end up damaging these straps, which I don't know if we can get our hands on. So I'm going to have Jen grab a pair of channel locks and hold it because if I can just break the bolt off the bottom, that's no big deal. But if I break the entire strap, that's a big deal. So Okay, so the next step is we're going to go ahead and pull the tank and um, and then I'll bring you back in here and we'll take a look. I'll wrap up today's video with that once we get this tank out. I'm calling it a day because it's getting colder by the minute, isn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> all right, let's do it. I'm going to need your help for this part. You're all set. Well, it's out. As you can see over here, there it is. And the tank itself is in really good shape. In fact, the whole area here is in really good shape, but um, it's dirty. Everything is so dirty. Dusty dirty, not dirty like grime. Like The Beetle was the nastiest, greasiest engine I'd ever taken apart. This one here wasn't a leaker. This one here dusty. this one here just got dusty from all its traveling. And so there's a lot of cleanup to do. We're going to clean it. We're going to paint it. Going to add our new return lines. Going to make sure that our uh, fuel sender is working while we have it out because now's the time to replace it. And also, if you get the camera right over here. The uh, fuel line here, the, the filler neck is way rotted. You can see all that was trash. Look at the splits in it and everything. So um, you can see it over there. I took that out. So this is going to get replaced while we have it out. In fact, all these lines, these little lines that are everywhere under here, might as well just replace them. You're not talking a ton of money. There's that. When I try to take it apart, it just completely collapsed on us. So. But that's, uh, that's the, I mean, this is a special line, but that's just regular hose. All this, this is a regular 90 elbow. I can find that anywhere. So nothing too new or interesting that we've come across so far. And that's going to wrap, that's going to wrap it up for in here tonight. I've, I've had enough fun for one day. It's, you know, there's only so many hours you can spend stuffed inside an engine compartment before you start to lose your cool. 
And plus, we've, I mean, I've got a lot done. Would you say we got a lot done? Lots of stuff done. Yeah. So not a bad day's adventuring on the uh, Bussaroo conversion. I guess that'll do it. I'll see you next time. Take care.